Having a model railroad test layout for working on train control devices without visible signals is really a bad thing. In fact, I think any model railroad layout would look better with some prototype-like operational signals. However, installing a commercial signaling system is relatively expensive and setting it up can be quite a challenging task. So, I started to work on a simpler and more cost-effective solution. Let's have a look. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station. After the positive experience with LED strips for my CTC panel as seen in video number 9, I tried to use the same base technology to make cheap signals. From a previous project I still had some NeoPixel LEDs sitting on my desk, so I used them as a basis for my searchlight signals. The diameter of the PCB is 10mm, which makes it perfect for HO scale. For my N scale test layout they are too big of course, but then I don't really care. I just made sure the mast height is about right, so that the center of the searchlight would be at the level of the engineer's eye. I went to Hobby Lobby and bought some 332nd brass tubing for the mast, which would make for a 4 inch tube in HO scale. For N scale it is also too big, but anyway. I cut them in 2 inch pieces and soldered them to the ground pads of the NeoPixels. The diameter of the tube is just enough to run three wire wrap wires through it and this is exactly what I needed in addition to the ground connection from the brass tube. The size of the NeoPixel LEDs is a square of 5 mm. So I designed and 3D printed a shield that reduces the lamp size to about 2.5 mm, which comes close to the standard signal lamp size of American railroads, which is 8.375 inches according to Wikipedia. Next, I printed square sockets to go on the bottom of the signal. The socket is 10 mm square, which in HO is a little less than 3 feet. Again, perfect for HO, too large for N scale. I soldered the wires to the PCB pads and tested the signals to make sure all connections were soldered properly. Then, I glued the sockets to the mast and gave the assembly a quick spray paint job. Metallic grey. Finally, I glued the front shields over the LED, added heat shrink tubing on the bottom to protect the wires and my needed 12 signals were ready for installation. Material cost so far less than 50 cents per piece. For the electrical connection I soldered a male and a female end of a standard LED cable to a prototyping board and added some pin headers to it so that I can daisy chain the boards using standard 3 wire cables. On my test layout I have always three signals relatively close together, so I can wire three signals to the same board. 5 volts and ground can share the same pins and for the data wire I just need to make sure that I connect the data out wire of one signal to the data in wire of the next signal. Really simple. So I drilled the holes into my test layout and installed the signals. I did not glue them in so that I can easily pull them out in case I need to transport the layout to a different location. I then installed the prototype boards underneath each signal group and wired the signals to it. Finally, I connected all four prototype boards with the standard cables and that's it. To control the signals I again use an ESP32, but this time I made a blue box for it. The 3 wire cable is simply connected to it and the signals are ready for operation. I will introduce the blue box in the next video as I am still in the process of finalizing the software, but here is an overview of the technical capabilities. The number of signals is only limited by device memory. 200 or more signals are realistic with just one signaling device. They can receive aspect commands via Loconet DCC track signal or Wi-Fi through the MQTT gateway from video number 1. The system supports a full range of switch addresses as well as extended accessory decoder commands which is the NMRA standards signal command. 
Addressing mode can be mixed, meaning some signals can listen to switch addresses while others are controlled using signal addresses. Each signal can be unique regarding number of LEDs on the signal head, number of aspects it can display or the LED colors it is using. The system supports up to 4 switch addresses per signal head for a maximum of 16 aspects in static or 8 aspects in dynamic mode. When using signal addresses, up to 36 aspects per signal head are supported. Signals are daisy chained using a simple 3 wire cable for serial connection. The system also provides a graphical user interface with a built in simulator for the design of aspects for each signal, depending on the number of lamps on the signal and aspects to be displayed. So that's it for the moment. In the next video I will show you how the blue box works and how the various signals can be configured. I am also working on other options to make signals. The NeoPixels are great for making searchlight signals for HO scale, but not really good for making N scale signals or signals with more than one lamp. One of my viewers pointed out the WS2812 driver device that can be used to drive regular LEDs and make them work just like NeoPixels. By using such a chip, it is possible to make any LED equipped signal working with the blue box. The other possibility I am looking into is placing the NeoPixel in the socket of the signal and run a fiber optics wire up to the signal head to distribute the light using a 3D printed lens. I would be interested in hearing your ideas about how to further miniaturize these signal heads. Please leave your ideas in the comment section below. Let's summarize. Signal systems do not have to be complex or expensive. Nowadays NeoPixel LEDs can be used to build signals that look acceptable and are very flexible, at least for HO scale and larger. The material cost of the searchlight signal shown in this video is around 50 cents per piece. Together with an ESP32 and some other components for the control system, I spent around $15. Daisy chaining all signals using just a 3 wire interface is much simpler than using signaling boards that only can support 4 or 8 or even 16 signals per board. And of course, much depends on ease of configurability to make the blue box simple to install and use on a layout. Here you are in for a nice surprise to be shown in the next video, so stay tuned. If you like this video, please click the like button below, subscribe to the IOTT channel and click that bell icon so you get the notification when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time!